Over the next 30 years. Over the next 30 years. Over the next 30 years. The key for successful development will be to try to find the right balance between the role of the state and the role of the market. I see a future in which you and you will have to work with policy makers in developing countries. So we have to broaden the Millennium Development Goals away from those which are easily measurable, which have been a trap into which economists were easily fall. Growth will be increasingly driven by technology that will replace jobs. The climate science has finally convinced the world there's a first order issue here. We're going to need to develop in the context of increasing temperatures and increasing uncertainty. And these are things that haven't been done. Integrate the climate change agenda the environment agenda, sustainability agenda with human development. What kinds of infrastructure in coastal cities, for example? We'll continue to see rising living standards in most of emerging markets, but particularly in Africa. We've seen additional data on some of the poorest countries, which enables us to have a much more precise analysis. The developing countries uh, will have a much larger share in the world economy, and therefore can provide each other more opportunities than they have ever done in the past. We are into a one-world situation where what we do in one part of the world bears on what's happening in other parts. And then nationally, each country itself has to forge its own specific policies for its own circumstances. You need that state capacity, and that's the thing that's, that's lacking the most across the developing world today. Rising inequality is a significant challenge that we're facing partly as a result of globalization and partly as a result of the way in which our economies have developed. We're going to see a blossoming of research on inequality, particularly in dimensions beyond income and wealth inequality. Building the capabilities of firms and entrepreneurs is important, but also building the capabilities of the general population in order to take up higher productivity employment. These sorts of changes could shrink income inequality in Africa. Change somehow the incentives of the elite that often holds the economies back. Add the di gender dimension to the various aspects of inequality. That constrain women from going beyond primary education. We often lack a good evidence base to be propositional, to change things. I see a future in which the link between theory and practice will have to be more broadly defined. We've done too little on politics and we've done too little on what makes for a good society. And so I think the combination of recognizing the importance of the topic and the data to study the topic will mean a growth in research and knowledge. It's going to be very critical that the knowledge that exists in the world is made available to these countries in development. The next 30 years is not going to be just a repeat of the last 30 years.